Hello, this is Paul Check. Welcome back to my video blog. Once again, we're going to talk about the red, yellow, and green of exercise. The thing I want you to remember when it comes to the yellow of exercise is that yellow means keep it mellow. Very important. If you're in the yellow zone on your total stress scores in my book, How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy, Remember, I've mocked the score graph from page 37, I believe, 37, maybe 38, right here on the chart for you. You can see that, page 37, right there. And don't forget, right after that is the test to help you identify what you should be using as your uh, individual proportions between flesh foods and plant foods so you can start the fine-tuning process of individualizing your meals from meal to meal, which is very important to all this. If you're eating wrong for your individual needs, exercise will be more significant a stressor on your body than it should be. Okay, so once you do the questionnaires, you get your total score. In our last presentation, part one, we talked all about the concerns of the red, and in that section I informed you that the higher your stress scores are the more yang or catabolic you become and the more likely you are to have an imbalance in the three primary hormones of adrenaline, cortisol, and insulin and I pointed out that the more out of balance these are the more global problems you have with every body system including mental emotional stability. So when it comes to exercise choices and being in the yellow zone, which means that your total score is between 150 and 250, we always have to ask ourselves, what's happening in my life right now? The mistake most people make when they're in yellow is they think, oh, I'm not too bad. And they continue to behave the same way they've been behaving. The problem is, is that they often don't ask the question, am I a person that was green, but's living an imbalanced lifestyle and not paying attention, and I'm now yellow, which means your stress scores are rising, in which case, doing all your CrossFit, ass kicker, hardcore group exercise, sculpting, hot yoga, whatever your favorite method of self-torture is, is going to make you worse and worse because you're not paying attention? Or was I in quite bad shape with a high stress score, but now I'm improving, which would be a good sign. Okay, so you always have to be very, very aware of which direction am I going? Am I getting worse or am I getting better? What do you need to look at? How do you feel now compared to last week? last workout, last month, pay attention to the trends in your life. You are what you eat. How have you been eating? Have you been maybe all of a sudden working away or traveling and eating out of restaurants and drinking bottled water out of plastic? Uh, have you had stressful relationships? Uh, you know, what's the relationship to what's going into your body with regard to food and water? How is your overall sense of stress in your life, whether it be individually, in relationships, personal, professional, and spiritual? Spiritual, remember, means causes or transformation. So anybody that's in a transformative state is having a spiritual experience for sure, like the birth of a child, the loss of a loved one, the loss of a job, uh, a mother whose kids are leaving home to go to college, uh, someone in a midlife crisis, children changing from one school to another. These are all transitional states, athletes that maybe were first string and now got put down to second string and they're all emotional about it. Transitional states are usually times of much higher stress. Also, high stress times for athletes are right before any kind of playoff or championship, regional, national championships, things like that. So you have someone that was performing really well and all of a sudden the bottom falls out but the coaches don't know what's wrong but they are not often paying attention to how the individual athlete processes stress or mental emotional challenges issues of self-esteem 
uh, perceived pressure, perceived expectation, all these things. Sleep-wake cycles. Has your sleep quality been getting better or worse? Very, very important, easy to monitor. Have you been eating on time, getting regular meals, or have you been skipping meals and getting too busy and having a head that's cut off from your body and surfing the internet and having blood sugar handling problems? If you are skipping meals, you're going to disrupt the balance of insulin, uh, adrenaline, cortisol, as I discussed in the previous uh, presentation on the red zone. Digestion. Is your digestion getting better or worse? How do you figure that out? Well, right in my book, How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy, I got a beautiful chart showing you all the poopy policemen that I designed myself. I studied how to read the poop using naturopathic journals and old medical texts and paying attention. Your pee and your poop tell you a lot about what's going on. Are you burping up food like gastrointestinal reflux? Are you having a heartburn? What are the things that are happening? Can you see any food at all in your poop? Are you seeing any parasites in your poop? Are you oscillating between loose stools and hard stools, which is a classic fungal infection sim uh, symptom? Are you all of a sudden dealing with diarrhea? Are you eating a lot more food than normal? Are you having ravenous cravings? All those issues are discussed in my DVD set healing fungal and parasite infections. These are very, very common issues. Another thing to consider is, have you been traveling? Like I said earlier, people pick up parasites when they're traveling quite commonly, from eating in restaurants, being under travel stress, uh, dishes aren't getting cleaned properly in a lot of restaurants, a lot of people handling your food, breathing on it, coughing, sneezing, you name it. So always look at issues of digestion and elimination. Look at your urine. Is your urinary frequency changing? Is the color changing? Is the smell changing? These are very, very important criteria. Fungal and parasite infections, you, if you score high on that, in my book, How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy, save yourself a lot of time, energy, and hassle. I wouldn't even worry about running to doctors unless you have severe symptoms and you usually wouldn't know what they were anyhow. Get a hold of the program and study it. It'll change your life. Remember, 90% of people worldwide now statistically have been shown to have fungal and parasite infections. Serious stuff. Okay, so you're paying attention to what am I eating? What's my inside sense of stress? How am I sleeping? Am I eating regularly and good food? Am I digesting and eliminating effectively? And do I have signs and symptoms of fungus and parasites. If you go to the Czech Institute website, you should be able to find a place where you can get a free report overviewing the kinds of things that I share in here and some good free information. So that's a key issue. So total stress load, am I getting better or worse? When we're asking that, we're looking at this, but we're also looking at energy levels, body systems. One way to define is just take the test again. Be honest when you take the test. Bullshitting yourself is a very, very bad idea. It's a, it's a thing that people do all the time, but you end up paying for that very dearly. If you do that, how is your level of motivation or readiness? People in the red zone usually have a low level of motivation or readiness. If your motivation and readiness is at the right level, you should feel on a scale of 10, 10 being kamikaze ready, zero being dead, you should be at least a seven out of 10 excited to do something a little more vigorous than you did in your red zone or work in program. By the way, if you're in the red zone, in, in my book, How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy, there's a series of four different levels of programs designed specifically to take you from red to green. So if you're not sure what to do, and this is complicated, follow the book. Hey, I made it for you, okay? What are, so remember motivation, if you're not a seven out of 10, you belong in the, in the work in zone or dealing with issues of red. What are my needs versus my wants? This is where a lot of people, especially, especially athletes, get in trouble. And it's usually the behavior of addressing wants 
before needs that leads to overtraining syndromes, chronic fatigue syndromes, fibromyalgia syndromes, uh, leaky gut syndromes, you know, the, the syndromes are long and many. So what do I really need? Address that, that means you're an adult. If you keep on dealing with your wants, that means you have either got a mind virus or you're addicted or you're still a child that doesn't know how to take care of the greatest gift in the universe called your body. Next, we want to look at undulation of stress. When it comes to undulation of stress, this is, you know, to do this comprehensively requires a fair bit of training. If you look at my program design correspondence course, study that. There's a section on periodization in there. Then if you're ready for more, do my advanced program correspondence course, advanced program design correspondence course. Do not do advanced program design, no matter how smart you think you are, until you've done program design. More people send advanced program design back saying it's above their head than any of my courses, and many of them thought they were geniuses when they bought it. And trust me, if Paul Check says it's advanced, you can pretty much take that to the bank. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Here you can see my little diagram. The vertical axis relates to the intensity of the exercise, which relates to how fast is your heart going and how fast are you breathing. Remember, work in intensity for people in the red zone or anybody that wants to use it as yin exercise for recovery. No elevation of heart rate, no elevation of resting breathing rate. Should be able to do it on, an empty, or on a full stomach, so it aids digestion and your tongue should stay moist. So when we go into the yellow, we can speed the heart up a little bit, but you should never feel like you're pushing yourself or stressing yourself. Just let that heart rate come up a little bit. Should be enjoyable. Breathing rate can speed up, but again, you shouldn't be huffing and puffing like you're running from a lion. It should be comfortable and enjoyable. So what we want to do is undulate. This is what's called undulating periodization. You might do a day or two of working in, followed by a day of working out, but we're not going to do any more than we can handle. In other words, this could be 10 minutes and it could be 20 minutes and it could be 30 minutes depending on how you feel as long as you're feeling good and then the next workout you might go back down to work in intensities then you go up and if you feel good you just push it just a little higher you can monitor your heart rate for example you can monitor your sense of perceived intensity you can look at the weight of what you're lifting so here you might have been doing some breathing squats with a pair of 10 pound dumbbells if you felt good didn't have any post-exercise soreness thought wow i could probably do more next time you come back you feel great then try 12 or 15 pound dumbbells so you know there's many many ways to do this but the key thing is common sense and honest observation and awareness okay so you would undulate work in one or two workouts work out in the yellow zone back to working in for one or two a little bit higher intensity working out back to working in undulating you'll notice that you have a progressive escalation of intensity over time this is just this is not a fixed number of anything it's just an example of what undulation looks like but by monitoring all these systems and how you feel and everything i'm saying you can do a great job of getting yourself healthy for free. And remember, healthy people don't have diseases. Healthy people aren't tired. Healthy people aren't sick. It's far cheaper to be healthy than it is to be ignorant of yourself and make excuses and act out mind viruses and emulate sick, fit people. Okay? Now, keep it simple. In the yellow zone, you might choose one primal pattern. Squatting, lunging, bending pushing, pulling, or twisting. So a bending would be a deadlift pattern. So you might use a light weight on the bar. For example, if you were in the yellow zone, I would tell you you should be able to do at least 30 repetitions with the weight, and you should be breathing with it. So exhalation on the way down, inhalation on the way up. Use a nice slow tempo that matches your breathing. So full as you exhale, when your weight touches the ground, you finish the exhalation. Right when you complete the breath, you should have completed standing up with the bar. 
So you're going to time the movement with the breathing, which harmonizes biological oscillators, which you can even do at yellow intensities. So go for one primal pattern when you're coming out of that red zone and starting to progressively lower your score by following the teachings and eat, move, and be healthy, and or the coaching that's given to you by a good Czech holistic lifestyle coach. They start at level one and go to level three. The higher the number, the higher the training. So we're looking for simple primal pattern movements, which are functional movements, one to three sets. Start off with one if you haven't done any kind of intense training at all. You've been in the red zone for a while. After you've done that workout at the yellow zone, don't do it again until you have no muscle soreness. If you go to bend over, oh, that's sore. Don't do it. Stay in the red zone or the work in zone. Pumping is the key thing. So we're just bringing up the speed of the pump a little bit. Dr. Happy is the key thing that sets rhythm, pressure, and flow. So Dr. Happy is the dreamer. Dr. Happy sets your rhythms, your rhythms set your pressure, and your rhythms and your pressure set your flow. So as you're getting healthier, because your score is going down, you're naturally going to be happier. And as your scores go down, it means you can push the pump a little faster, which means faster rhythm and flow. Okay? So number five, no yellow again until the soreness is gone and authentic energy levels are up. So that was the key point that I wanted to make there. I think I've covered it for you. So there's a little yellow mojo, baby. Remember, if it's yellow, keep it mellow. Always ask the question, am I getting worse due to stressors? Or am I getting better because I'm intelligently managing myself and loving, caring for, and respecting myself? You have a lot to learn in this little book, which is a collection of the handouts that I made up over a number of years to give my patients who are commonly making the same mistakes, no matter whether they had hemorrhoids, herpes, back pain, or brain tumors. So it is the basics you've all got to know. Remember, my multimedia ebook, The Last Four Doctors You'll Ever Need, has a bunch of information that's not in there that's extremely helpful. For more program design information, program design and advanced program design, and if you think you might have fungal or parasite infections, my DVD course will give you information that's not available in any course anywhere in the world that I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot. Okay? Thanks for joining me today. I will see you again, and we will talk about how to manage yourself when you're in the green, baby. And I might even have some green pants for you, too. You never know.